Hi everybody, it's Slim Jim here from the forums. So the other day when uh, the Kerbal Space Program forums were down, I was posting on Reddit, uh, I made this fighter video, and I put up a picture of me landing on the uh, TAC roof. You get good response, so I figured I'd make a video of it, so you can see the whole full thing in splendor. So here we go, we we'll have our Seedorf Kerman climb the mighty beast and you'll see just how insane and fun this thing is to fly there's some weird bug with the wing here, it's procedural wings it goes invisible from time to time at certain angles it's pretty fun so while I make my way to the cockpit we're gonna check out some of the cargo holds uh, which I have on top here I yeah, put some crew tanks. It's the new S2 ones with the uh, IVAS, pretty cool. Also, put the top fuel tanks down here. It's also fuel tanks, uh, much like these ones down below. I have some cast stuff stuck down in here. You see, it's pretty awesome uh, how it just happened. I uh, put this this way and uh, folds out just so nicely. We saw these cast boxes. Uh, Tucked away some uh, monopropellant tanks in here as well. You can hide pretty much anything in here. There's plenty of space for pretty much everything. And here's the crew tanks. Here's the ladders you can climb over to the other side, which also has uh, another pair of you know, cast boxes and propellants and stuff. Here's the powerhouse, let's say. It's an active reactor. The reactors uh, and these batteries, uh, these very stock look alike uh, battery packs. They're from uh, Future Propulsion, a new Future Propulsion, I think, yeah. And here's uh, Ketane tanks and converters. Um, I don't have the mining gear or the uh, detectors, but it's easy to add under the wings uh, later if you want to. But I haven't uh, bothered with that. I tried to cut down all the parts, so this won't lag too much. Uh, I play on the laptop, and uh, my cores, my CPU, it's uh, yeah, it's average at best, or decent. So let's go to cockpit. Speed it up a little bit. Here you see just how big this thing is. Probably 30, 40 treble meters or something. <laughs> it's uh, remarkably stable to fly. <coughs> so you got it. Here's the ramps and the cargo hold. It's uh, a lot of volume. I haven't experimented much. They haven't experimented much with it to you know, try to tuck in some logos or anything. You can, but um, I haven't tried it. I'm more interested in uh, putting in some containers and rocket parts or you know, uh, external launch pad kind of resources and uh, or fuel tanks or whatnot. Maybe satellite parts and then you scrap them out. I think maybe rails and stuff. Anyways. Close that. The first row, I put them in the lower thrust, so uh, because the weight center is around here somewhere, so I can put these on uh, full thrust, all of them. Uh, I modified uh, these VTOL engines. They, they uh, not the jet engines. Uh, Where you could use all, all jet engines and fill this thing up with less fuel and. Go pure puritan um, and do this anyway. But I modified the uh, rocket VTOLs uh, and I got the, I put in some uh, higher uh, thrust for them, uh, about 
double and um, change the ISP a little bit. Yeah, I, I kind of cheated, but change the ISP to you know values that match uh, a jet engine uh, down here in the atmosphere, and then match a normal rocket engine while it goes um, you know in outer space uh, orbit and uh, whatnot. And here's the Sabres, which will uh, you know give us the boost up. I'm thinking about making giving nuclear uh, thrust and ISP more than that way. Alright, let's go. Before you do anything, you have to invert all these um, B2Os because they're all um, you put them upside down pretty much in the editor, so um, it's a lot of work. You have to invert all the sides. So this side has to be true, to see, and false. Over here, and then you have to make sure the tag fuel balancer is on and SAS and the RCS. I don't use make here for this, um, I do just find it just SAS for now. Uh, while if you want to reach orbit and such, uh, okay. all right, let's take off. Yeah, it's a lot of landing gear. I suspect they're, yeah, why I have such an FPS drop. I'm at 14 FPS, uh, or 12 FPS, no, 14 FPS. Had an indicator before. Okay. Right, I'm gonna try to land on the roof. Let's see where that takes me. I'm navigating this and uh, you see where exactly it's accelerating towards. Uh, look at this. I try to pinpoint the forward thrust indicator around here so it's stable enough. Now it's lowering very slowly. I'm going to try to just tap the shift button so it can stay there soon. This thing has a remarkable turn rate. It's because I put the custom uh, steering uh, mode for these V2 things. Uh, V9 did some awesome work with these things. Uh, they're really, uh, really fun to use. Thanks for some great V2 stuff. So now I'm trying to get my course right. I've increased some power, some thrust. I hit the main engines just for a short moment. I get some speed. I'll kill them. Takes a while to shut up. These side SR, uh, RCS uh, thrusters, they um, had an original weight of about 9 tons, you know, it was super heavy, you know, an RCS part, so edit that that way, you know, I go to the part files and solve my problems pretty much, you know, that's what I do, I try to, you know, make it up a challenge anyway, even though I uh, modify some engines and stuff, just to keep things interesting. It's also what allows me to do these kind of things. I'm not considering using a hover toggle, which will ensure I stay in a certain altitude. I can't accelerate beyond it. Let's see, it's good. This is going good. The hard part uh, later is to not have 
to roll, you mustn't roll at all. You must instead try to use the RCS to um, you know navigate the sides and such. Nice and easy. It's all of these X Force effects since I had 24 engines producing X Force uh, gas steam. This is pretty <laughs> good. This is about as much roll I can have. And the height is stable as well. Bit A breaks. Fifty mm extra. It's kind of rolling to the right. So I'm a bit off. Now it's rolling back. Kind of hard to start once, once it uh, starts, and then you miss it completely. Hopefully, I get some control on it now. Now I lower my throttle. It's a lot of RCS juggling and coming Trying to get it not to roll. It's really hard to pinpoint this. Please trust the limit. Ah, I forgot I didn't use the energy. Oh, here we go, I kill it. Landed somewhere. I had done better. You know, once I pretty much got straight into it in the middle and everything, I was so happy and so sad I didn't cut it on tape, but it's doable. Totally, totally. So yeah, here you have it. Uh, you can do pinpoint landings with this thing, and uh, I hope you could. Yeah, you can reach orbit too, especially with the editing I'm doing. I'm not sure if you can do. If it's even possible to get this thing in orbit uh, doing it with uh, non-edited, uh, non-edited engines and such. But I'm confident you could do it. If you um, stick to the ISP and trust that game, the game uses, you know, it's just that you um, make the rocket mode of this one to a nuclear engine one, and uh, that you keep at the ISP of these engines at the, around uh, 2000 and such um, at ground level, and then it reduces while you go up. And then you use these to accelerate yourself um, to those, say, 1200 or 1500 uh, meter per second before you switch to nuclear energy. I haven't tried to do that yet. Might do it in the future, but for now this is easy. Alright, uh, thanks for watching. I um, might uh, post some other stuff with this later at some point. Maybe I'll get later with this. Who knows? See you then. Thanks.